We landed in Costa Rica at around 2 p.m. and immediately took a transfer from the San Jose airport to La Fortuna. It was a three and a half hour drive and here we got our first glimpse of the majestic Arano volcano, but more on that later. We stopped for dinner at India Curry and Coffee House and headed to our hotel, Los Lagos, a resort style hotel which was immediately apparent in the immaculate landscaping. Our room was spacious, clean, and overall a very comfortable accommodation. We also had a private patio area to enjoy. We ended the day with a dip in one of the hotel's many hot springs, and we really sunk into the Costa Rican mantra Pura Vida, which describes the relaxed and carefree lifestyle Costa Ricans have adopted. Day two, our first full day in Costa Rica. We woke up bright and early today and saw the resort in daylight for the first time. And it was even more beautiful than the night before. Breakfast was buffet style and included a variety of options, including traditional Costa Rican breakfast items. Our first attraction of the trip was Arenal Volcano National Park, where we first hiked to see the Cieba tree. The Cieba tree is thought to be at least 400 years old. To put that into perspective, Costa Rica has only been independent for about half that time, 202 years. We continued on the trail to the Arano viewpoint. The Arano volcano is a huge deal here in La Fortuna. In 1968, the volcano had a major eruption, but the volcano is currently in a resting period, so no volcanic activity for us. Our next stop was the Mystico Arenal Hanging Bridges Park, and the Arenal namesake makes its appearance again. The trails were obviously gorgeous, but the main attraction here is the whopping 16 bridges you can walk across, six of which are hanging bridges. And it was such a cool experience to walk across the bridges at this high elevation. We were basically amongst the trees. Mystico is also home to our first waterfall of the trip. Yes, I did say first, so stay tuned for the other waterfalls. But we enjoyed this very pretty waterfall with a stream of water running in between two jagged rocks. And here's some more bridge footage because we just couldn't get enough of how beautiful it was. I mean, we were completely surrounded by greenery on all sides. Back at the resort, we were surprised by some horses right in our backyard, which was so cool. Day three, starting out with our delicious buffet breakfast. On the way to our first attraction, our Uber driver pointed out these fascinating hanging nests used by Oropondolo birds. Today, we went to Tenorio Volcano National Park, which is not really known for the volcano that is its namesake, rather the magnificent Rio Celeste waterfall known for its turquoise blue waters and fairy tale like landscape. Interestingly, Rio Celeste's blue color comes from an optical illusion. Further down the trail, we saw the wildly boasted color change from blue to brown waters. And this was an amazing sight. I also spotted a butterfly and maybe I was a little too excited about it. We could smell the sulfuric waters here. At the end of the trail, we saw an even more dramatic display of color chains between brown murky waters to unreal looking turquoise waters. Back at the resort, we hiked a two kilometer fully uphill trail to an aerial viewpoint. The trail started at the end of our resort's property and it was undoubtedly a difficult hike, but there were some beautiful sights along the way including an expansive view of our hotel and of course, the Arano Volcano. We also saw the famed leafcutter ants that can carry up to 50 times their own weight. After what seemed like forever, we finally made it to the viewpoint where there was a building that looked like an abandoned amphitheater. But once we saw the view, oh my gosh, the entire hike felt worth it. Well, almost. After we returned from our hike, we explored the resort grounds, starting with the stables, complete with horses. 
Los Lagos also boasts numerous trails within the resort that were just so wonderful. There was even a little tortoise pond. Day 4. Our first stop was the Arenal Observatory Lodge, where we saw a white-nosed coatee, which is a member of the raccoon family. Arenal Observatory Lodge is a somewhat remote hotel extremely close to the Arenal Volcano. With the day pass, visitors can enjoy the expansive property and beautiful hikes. There are a couple waterfalls on the property, but the main one is the Danta Waterfall. And there are, of course, beautiful gardens, and all the paths are nicely paved and easy to walk on. Arenal Observatory Lodge offers over seven miles of marked trails. Climbing 150 steps takes you to the top of the nest. Here, you can enjoy magnificent views of Arenal and surrounding mountains. We had lunch at Soda La Palma, where we had tasty Costa Rican dishes. And then we headed to our next attraction, the La Fortuna Waterfall, which is located just outside of the La Fortuna town. We started the 500 step journey down to the La Fortuna Waterfall, and we were in awe when we saw the beautiful waterfall that awaited us. It was a lot taller than we expected, and the force at which it was hitting the water was intense. Swimming is allowed here and we had a great time in the waterfall's cool, crisp waters. Next, we headed to the La Fortuna town, where there was a beautiful church, and of course, Arenal in the background. The town has some great eating spots and souvenir shops, which we had a fun time exploring. There is a beautiful park in front of the church with so many bright flowers, and even a typical park water fountain. Day five, our final morning in La Fortuna and transfer to Monte Verde. We started the day off with a chocolate, sugarcane, and coffee tour at Northfields. And it was so cool to learn about the processes to make all three of these products. Who knew that it took cacao plants five years to mature before even developing their first cacao pods? My favorite part of the tour was the chocolate tasting, where we got to taste different types of yummy chocolate. We also got to make sugarcane juice by grinding sugarcane. We learned so much about how the famous Costa Rican coffee is cultivated from seed to cup. And of course, tasted some delicious coffee. The plantations at Northfields were so expansive and our tour guide was so informative and funny. Overall, we had a great time on this tour. Back at the resort, we checked out the butterfly garden, which was full of butterfly activity. Surprising, since it was nearly lunchtime and we thought the butterflies would be asleep. We walked around the Los Lagos property and marveled at the different colorful plants and wildlife. We got some great footage here as well, which just goes to show how beautiful this resort and its location were. I mean, just look at this. After that, it was time to say goodbye to our hotel in Los Lagos, where we enjoyed the amazing pools, hot springs, gardens, and more. And we were off to Monte Verde, a journey that included a taxi, boat, and another taxi ride. The final taxi ride had such beautiful views, with rolling hills that had no end in sight. Our accommodation here in Monte Verde was the Los Pinos Hotel. But it wasn't your traditional hotel. It had more of a cabin vibe, complete with three separate bedrooms, each with its own bathroom, 
a living room, and a kitchen. But our favorite part was the deck area, where they had set up hammocks and comfy chairs that had relaxation and Pura Vida written all over it. We ended our day with a little exploration of the nearby town. Day six, the penultimate day of our trip. We started the day with an activity I had been looking forward to the whole trip, ziplining at Salvatura Adventure Park. And it was so much fun zipping through the trees. There were also a couple zip lines where we were basically in the clouds, which was so cool. Salvatora also offers a sloth sanctuary. All the sloths were so cute, lazily sleeping and climbing from branch to branch, but this one totally stole the show. Look at how cute it is reaching upside down to get its food. After lunch at the restaurant, we did our third activity at Salvatora the treetop walkways, which consisted of forested paths and bridges. But what made these bridges special and so unique from the other bridges of our trip was that they were engulfed in clouds. After all, Monte Verde is known for its cloud forests. Tonight, we did a night walk with Santa Maria's night tours to see some wildlife. Unfortunately, these types of excursions are always a gamble as wildlife is not guaranteed. So we saw a few bugs, but were overall pretty disappointed. But on to day seven, our final day in Costa Rica. Today, we went to the Monteverde Cloud Forest Biological Preserve, a long name I know. There are many trails that you can choose from, and we planned a route that included a hanging bridge, continental divide, and waterfall. Compared to the other trails we had walked on this trip, there were significantly more wildlife noises here. I guess you could say we were surrounded by footfalls and bird calls. The forest had an insane depth, and it's not really something you can capture on camera, but it was such a beautiful sight to see. Next up, the Continental Divide, which marks our second one, if you know you know. It was really cloudy when we got there, but five minutes later, it completely cleared up, revealing the gorgeous blue sky. And just as soon as they left, the clouds started rolling in again a couple minutes later. I guess you could call it the magic of the cloud forest. We walked down the trail for a little while and finally made it to the waterfall. Admittedly, it was smaller than we expected, but what made this waterfall so special was the nature it was surrounded by. We spent some time in the Santa Elena town getting a bite to eat and doing some souvenir shopping. And then we headed to the orchid garden, which is located right in town. We got little magnifying glasses to see even the smallest of orchids and our super knowledgeable guide taught us so much about identifying the different varieties of orchids. We had a lot of fun walking through the gardens and admiring this magnificent plant. Our last evening in Costa Rica was spent walking around the Los Pinos grounds. There was this cool observatory tower where we got a panoramic view of the greenery below. And Los Pinos also had a huge greenhouse with any and every green vegetable. Finally, we headed to a sunset viewpoint, which is very close to our hotel. We watched as gorgeous hues of orange and pink danced across the sky, creating this magnificent sunset, the perfect way to end our Costa Rica trip. Alas, we had to say goodbye to Monte Verde and our amazing accommodation. It was a three hour drive back to the San Jose airport, but not one without adventure. At one point, there was a whole cow stampede with cows surrounding our car. But that brings us to the end of our Costa Rican adventure. We hope you enjoyed, and in true Costa Rican fashion, Pura Vida. Pura Vida.